What's up, homies? I thought I'd do a little continuing reading of I Hate You, Don't Leave Me. Sorry it's been so long. Had some little personal stuff to attend to. But anyway, this is page six of the first chapter. Demographic borders. Who are the borderline people one meets in everyday life? She is Carol, a friend since grade school. Over a minor sight, she accuses you of stabbing her in the back and tells you that you were really never friends at all. Weeks or months later, Carol calls back, congenial and blasé, as if nothing had happened between you. He is Bob, a boss in your office. One day, Bob bestows glowing praise on your efforts in a routine assignment. Another day, he berates you for an insignificant error. At times, he is reserved in distance. Other times, he is suddenly, uproar uproariously, one of the boys. She is Arlene, your son's girlfriend. One week, she is the picture of preppy. The next, she is epitome of punk. She breaks up with your son one night, only to return hours later, pledging endless devotion. He is Brett, your next-door neighbor, unable to come to grips with his collapsing marriage. He denies his wife obvious... He denies his wife obvious unfaithfulness in one breath and then takes complete blame for it in the next. He clings desperately to his family, come... Caroming from guilt and self-loathing to raging attacks on his wife and children who have so unfairly accused him. If the people in these short profiles seem inconsistent, it should not be surprising. Inconsistency is the hallmark of BPD. Unable to tolerate paradox, borderlines are walking paradoxes. Human catch-22s. Their inconsistency is a major reason why the mental health profession has had such difficulty defining a uniform set of criteria for the illness. If these people seem all too familiar, this also should not be surprising. The chances are good that you have a spouse, relative, close friend, or co-worker who is borderline. <clears throat> Perhaps you know a little bit about BPD or recognize borderline characteristics within yourself. Though it is difficult to get a firm grasp on the figures, mental health professionals generally agree that the number of borderlines in the general population is growing and at a rapid pace. Though some observers claim that it's the therapist's awareness of the disorder that is growing rather than the number of borderlines. Is borderline personality really a modern day plague or is it merely the diagnostic label or or is merely the diagnostic label borderline new? In any event, the disorder has provided new insight into psychology psychological framework of several related conditions. Numerous studies have linked BPD with anorexia, bulimia, drug addiction, and teenage suicide, all of which have increased alarmingly over the last decade. Some studies have uncovered BPD in approximately 50% of all patients who have eating disorders. Other studies have found that over 50% of substance, substance abusers also fulfill cr the criteria for BPD. Self-destructive tendencies or suicidal gestures are very common among borderlines. Indeed, they are one of the syndrome's defining criteria. The incidence of documented health, of documented death by suicide in about 8 to 10 percent among borderlines and even higher for borderline adolescents. A history of previous suicide attempts, a chaotic family life, and a lack of support system incre increases the likelihood. The risk multiplies even more among, among borderline patients who also suffer from depressive or manic depressive disorders or from alcoholism or drug abuse. <clears throat> Emotional hemophilia. DSM-3R lists eight criteria for BPD, five of which must be pr <clears throat> present for the diagnosis. <clears throat> At first glance, these criteria may seem unconnected or only peripherally related. When explored, when in, when explored in, death, in depth, however, the eight symptoms are seen to be intricately connected, interacting with each other so that one symptom sparks the rise of another like the pistons of, combust, of a combustion engine. The eight criteria may be summarized as follows. Each is described in depth in Chapter 2. Unstable and intense interpersonal relationships, impulsiveness and potentially self-damaging behaviors, such as substance abuse, sex, shoplifting, reckless driving, and binge eating, severe mood shifts, frequent and inappropriate displays of anger, recurrent suicidal threats or gestures or self-mutilating behaviors, lack of clear sense of identity, chronic feelings of emptiness or boredom, <coughs> frantic efforts to avoid real or imagined abandonment. <coughs> Beneath the clinical whatever, I don't know that word, lies the anguish experienced by borderlines and their family and families and friends. For the borderline, much of life is a rel relentless emotional roller coaster with no apparent destination. 
For those living with loving or treating the borderline, the trip can seem just as hopeless and frustrating. Jennifer and millions of other borderlines are provoked to rage uncontrollably against the people they love most. They feel helpless and empty, dissipating their identity. Mood changes come swiftly. Explosive, explosively carrying the borderline from the heights of joy to the depths of depression. Filled with anger, one hour calm the next. He often has little inkling about why he was driven to such wrath. Afterward, the inability to understand the origins of the episode brings on more self-hate and depression. A borderline suffers a kind of emotional hemophilia. He lacks the clotting mechanism needed to, to moderate his spurts of feelings, stimulate, stimulate a passion, and the borderline emotionally bleeds to death. Sustained periods of contentment are foreign to the borderline. Chronic emptiness eats at him until he is forced to do anything in order to escape. In the grip of these lows, the borderline is prone to a myriad of impulsive, self-destructive acts, drug and alcohol binges, eating marathons, anorexic fasts, bulimic purges, gambling forays, shopping sprees, sexual promiscuity, and self-mutilation. He may attempt suicide, often not with the intent to die, but to feel something to confirm he is alive. I hate the way I feel, confesses one borderline. When I think about suicide, it seems so tempting, so inviting. Sometimes it's the only thing I, I can relate to. It is difficult not to want to hurt myself. It's like if I hurt myself, the fear and pain will go away. Central to the borderline syndrome is the lack of a core sense of identity. When describing themselves, borderlines typically paint a confused or contradictory self-portrait in contrast to neurotic patients who had a much clearer sense of who they were. To overcome their indistinct and mostly negative self-image, borderlines, like actors, are constantly searching for good roles, complete characters that, can use, that they can use to fill the identity void. So they often adapt like chameleons to the environment, situation, or companions of the moment, much like the title character in Woody Allen's film, Zelig, I don't know how to say that, who literally assumes the personality, identity, and appearance of anyone around him. The lure of ecstatic experiences, whether attained through sex, drugs, or other means, is sometimes overwhelming for the borderline personality. In ecstasy, he can return to a primal world where the self and the external world merge, a form of second infancy. During periods of intense loneliness and emptiness, the borderlines will go on drug binges, bouts with alcohol, sex, sexual escapades with one or several partners, sometimes lasting days at a time. If <clears throat> It is as if when the struggle to find identity becomes intolerable, the answer is either to lose identity altogether or to achieve a, sembl achieve a semblance of self through pain or numbness. The family background of a borderline is often marked by alcoholism, depression, and emotional dis disturbances. A borderline childhood is often a desolate battlefield scarred with the debris of indifferent, rejecting, or absent parents, emotional deprivation, and chronic abuse. One study reported that a history of verbal, physical, and or sexual abuse or of prolonged separation or neglect by primary caregivers was the most important factor in distinguishing borderline patients from those with other disorders. Other studies have found a history of severe psychological, phys physical, or sexual abuse in 20 to 75 percent of borderline patients. The unstable relationships carry over into adolescence and adulthood where romantic attachments are highly charged and usually short-lived. The borderline will frantically pursue a man or woman one day and send him packing the next. Longer romances, usually measured in weeks or months rather than years, are usually filled with turbulence and rage, wonder and excitement. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and stop here. The next part is splitting the black and white world of the borderline. So I'll continue with that um, on my next video, uh, which is probably tonight. So until then, peace out. See ya.